Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Another Set of Eyes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at an interesting way to calculate the gaps between number of events within a time period. Let's say we have a month and we have several events and I want to know how many days fall in between each one of the events along the whole period of the month. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So again, here's our scenario. I have a list of the days in the month of April. And certain days during the month, I performed uh, an activity. And I want to know how many days at that point uh, fell between the last two activities. So in this case, I had an activity on the first and on the third, and there was a one-day gap between the two. Then I had it again on the 10th, and there was a six-day gap between the third and the tenth. So I have a formula in here that I copy all the way down, and it will give me the calculation for the number of days since the last event, or the gap between the last event. It's not the number of days between. For example, if I have the tenth and the third, I subtract the two, there should be seven. But I take another one off just to make it six, so I have just the number of inactive days or the gap between the two days. So the three functions that I use are if error, if, and large. And you can see an example of the formula in cell F2. And also notice it has the curly brackets around it because it's an array formula. So let's take a look and break down this formula. And there's really just a, a few components of it. First of all, the if error function, I'm going to click over here so you can see it a little better up here. The if error function here, all it's doing is saying, run this formula if there's no error. If there is an error, just give me a blank. So that's all that first formula is doing. Now the, next, the first if statement here is just saying the logical test is, does b2 equal x? If so, perform this function. If not, give me a blank. So all that's doing is checking to see if I should run that function or not. So lastly, the two main components of this are the two large functions. And what the large functions are doing are looking for within a range what is the largest number, or in this case the highest date, that has an X in it, and what is the second highest date. You can see in my large function here, the large function, the array, is this if statement, and my K number is 1. Whereas in this large function, my array is the same if statement, and the K number is 2. And all I'm doing is subtracting the 2, so I'm finding the largest date within the range and the second largest date within a range, subtracting the 2, and then subtracting another 1 in order so that I only get the days of the gap and not uh, the regular days from one date to the next. So let's take a look at this if statement. The if statement, and I'm going to hit escape here, and I'm going to go down to one a little farther down. Select this one here. So this if statement says, if b2 to b11, again, notice my b2 is an absolute reference, so as I copy it down, that range grows. If b2 to b11 equals x, then a2 to a11, which are the dates, and then give me the largest of that in the large function. So b2 to b11 equals x, if I highlight that, and I hit F9, you'll see I have true, which is at 4, 1, another true at 4, 3, and another true at 4, 10. So if I take a look at those dates, I'll select A2 to A11 in this case. I'll hit F9, and I have the actual reference for each date here. So 42095 is 4, 1, 42097 is 4, 3, etc. So by running this formula here, I'm going to hit escape. So by running this if formula, you can see I get F9. I get 42095, false, 42097, false, 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 42104. So if I take the 
top, first largest of that, I'm going to get 42104, which in this case is April 10th. If I do the same thing here with this if statement, I'll run that to here, I'll hit F9, and you can see I get the same list as I got in here. And But this time I'm asking for the second largest. So my first largest here, my first large statement here, is going to give me, and I'll hold it there, F9, 42104. The next large statement, which is asking for the second largest date in that same range, is giving me that. So all I'm doing with an array formula is subtracting the largest and the second largest date within that range and then subtracting one again. So I have an if statement. If, in fact, that equals that, then subtract these two dates and again minus one. If not, just give me a blank. Or if there's an error, also give me a blank. Then I copy that down and then I get the number of days of gap between two dates. Here I have six days in a gap. Here I have three. And down at the bottom where I have two next to each other, I have zero. So this formula is how I was able to achieve calculating and displaying the number of days between any two events within a time period. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.